The Bartlett School of Architecture at University College London is a world-renowned institution in architectural education and research. The Bartlett brand stands for innovation, bold thinking, boundary-pushing research and high-achieving students and academics. Their students are amongst the most sought after in the UK and overseas, known for their outstanding drive, creativity and skills. Over the past 20 years, they have received more RIBA medals than any other architectural school. The redevelopment of Waits House provides an opportunity to create a building that supports and enhances that reputation. So this project uh, actually started about 40 years ago when they designed the previous building. Um, and it was not the best building in the world from day one. Um, it was put up in the 1970s and at that time um, they had uh, a relatively res restricted cash and so the building was done on the cheap. And so for many years we've been patching up uh, and making good a 1970s building. The site, the location, and right in the heart of Bloomsbury, right next door to the whole of the rest of the university is wonderful. Um, and so we're in a very good location, but with a building that was rather embarrassing. The problem with the existing building was it was very insular, very internalised, very compartmentalised, uh, and every single kind of square millimetre of space had been packed so tightly with accommodation, but it was only fulfilling the needs for about a third of the school's population. So the biggest issue they had was a chronic shortage of space. So we wanted to create uh, new types of space, new formats of space, space that was more open, more interconnected, more collaborative and more social across the whole building and that would encourage interaction between students so that they could do more peer-to-peer -peer learning and also amongst staff so they could do more um, collaborative research. And that was one of the key drivers for, for our approach uh, as well as trying to balance the need to get as much accommodation and space in what is actually quite a constrained site within a conservation area. The building's actually in a very historic part of the town. Uh, in fact, it's on a boundary between two different conservation areas, and those two conservation areas each have different character. The Gordon Street end is institutional. It has some large buildings in it, including our chemistry building and our nanotechnology building. And the Taverton Street end uh, to the east um, is in the Bloomsbury conservation area with Georgian buildings. Uh, one of the key early questions for us was to, whether or not to demolish and start from scratch or whether we should retain um, the structure and in fact we looked at this very carefully. Um, clearly from a sustainability point of view it was good to keep the existing structure because that's a whole lot of concrete that wouldn't have to be recast. That then complicates the build in all sorts of ways because you're moving from a new build, which is essentially a simpler thing to do, uh, into a retrofit where you really don't quite know what you're going to be working with until you've stripped everything out and, and started looking at it in detail. So what we did is we stripped the building right down to its raw core and kept the majority of its structure. And then we sought to strategically expand the building in every dimension we could, so vertically as, far, as much as we could. We created an extension uh, to the southwest corner that rose from basement to sixth floor, but for the half width of the building. And then we wrapped the entire perimeter of the building with a, sounds quite modest, but a 1.5 metre perimeter extension. But when that's stacked up over six or seven floors, it all equates to a substantial amount of additional space, effectively an additional floor of gained area. The way that was done was by cantilevering um, steel structure off the existing concrete framework. Uh, it's a very cunning solution actually, um, but it meant that the entire weight of that cantilever additional floor had to be carried by the existing foundations of the building, of the main building. So working closely with the wider team and then Gilbert Ash, we managed to develop solutions where we could strip out the existing structure and make strategic uh, interventions in that structure like removing columns, strengthening columns, adapting columns so that we could absolutely maximise what this building and frame could take. The weight restrictions of the new elements being applied was something which had to be developed through the design process and as such through surveys and using a very slender brick which is one which isn't found off the shelf uh, we worked along with the design team to overcome each and every single one of these challenges. 
Designing a masonry clad building in a, when we have a finite capacity on the frame, obviously masonry and bricks are heavy and we had a challenge there about how we could uh, balance that need for a, an externally heavy facade or perceived heavy facade with the, the, the capacity of the structure. We had to use a relatively thin German brick. It's just a bit, bit thinner than the normal, but it was light enough for us to be able to clad the whole of this building in a brick facade, uh, which is what the planners wanted. Because it's a conservation area, we have to match in with uh, the old historic Georgian buildings around. So once we had chosen a brick that we liked, we can take a lot of effort uh, communicating and convincing other parties that it was the right brick. And that was an, an interesting process. And working with Gilbert Ash, we uh, built lots of sample panels, we tested mortar colours, we looked at joint sealants, we looked at mock-ups of windows within the, fr within the brickwork to make sure that we got the balance and the palette of materials just right and so that every party of the process was happy. Upon tender, the original design intent for the furniture was something simple but elegant. It was the standard furniture which you would have in any educational style building. Uh, it was a good design, but the architect and the design team and the clients, they did want something a bit more bespoke. And Gilbert Ash is central in actually making that happen, deciding on the way that the structures would be constructed to hold up the furniture and the storage, uh, deciding on the way that um, the network and power services would be, and lighting and so forth would be included into the design. Um, all of these were parts of that prototyping process and fit-out process. So through a process, they worked along with ourselves and one of our specialist supply chains to develop upon a bespoke system, utilising a key clamp steel system along with birch plywood. The, the beauty about having key clamp, and we think of key clamp as something which is external, it's outside, it's a handrail, it's a temporary structure, it's a system which isn't generally used as part of a furniture requirement. But the architect had the vision and we were able to make it come true through ourselves and our specialist design team, we worked up a system which not only acts as furniture which can be used on a daily basis but also can be taken back down and reutilised and rebuilt in different sequences which frees up space in the future for the building. So one of the key things we asked the architects to include was an accommodation stair in the building um, to help us to actually glue the floors together and make sure that that was open and visible and you could see where you were. Now that was going to be a big feature staircase and of course that comes with a challenge because the question of what a feature is, uh, it requires design and this is a school of architecture in which you've got lots of designers. So from day one the how you designed the staircase was quite an interesting political question within the user community of the school. We looked at this design and brought on other specialist designers to see if we could make efficiencies upon that design, but also deliver the staircase that they wanted. This all took some delay uh, because that design iteration um, was, was quite a, quite a long-term thing. Um, it meant that by the time we came to installing the staircase, it couldn't just be all dropped in from the top because the roof had already gone on. Um, and so it had to be uh, brought in at the bottom, hoisted up and built downwards from the top. Now this was particularly difficult and it was a challenge but through robust methodologies we were able to successfully complete this. And what we've ended up with is actually the feature of the building that everybody photographs, everybody comes to look at and really works. It's a social uh, connector in the building which is exactly what I wanted in the original brief. To see people using that that staircase on a daily basis exactly as it was anticipated, in fact beyond as it was anticipated, is really rewarding for us. And amongst the neighbours are student residences in, um, in Taverton Street and of course we have students who are taking examinations and very sensitive about noise and we had to work very carefully uh, to ensure that the building works didn't disturb them. Our chemists and our nanotechnologists are doing very sensitive work um, in terms of vibration sensitive experiments and so for that we had to make sure that the vibration that was produced by the site was controlled um, and dust which is a major issue for a lot of our experimental work and so there was a quite, con quite careful 
um, control of these things. And so we would have regular meetings with uh, Gilbert Ash and with other stakeholders, including my colleagues in other departments, um, to ensure that we understood what the constraints were, and then we could design the, the processes on site uh, to ensure that they were disturbed as little as possible. And I think this was something which Gilbert Ash participated in fully and led, actually, which has been remarkably successful, actually, overall. Um, we've ended up uh, still being friends with our neighbours. The project was part of UCL's wider programme to modernise its Bloomsbury campus. It was an important opportunity to show how the retrofit of 1970s building stock is possible, while retaining the embodied energy and CO2 emissions held in the concrete frame. Throughout the project, we tracked our CO2 emissions and how our contractors travelled to and from the building site. We also tracked our waste management and are pleased to report that 98% was diverted from landfill and recycled. From a health and safety perspective, of the 70,000 man-hours on the project, we had just one reported incident, and that was only a cut finger. We're really proud of that because it shows how much we care about our supply chain and also our site management's level of diligence. The project has achieved an overall environmental rating of BREAM excellent. This represents best practice in sustainable design and construction and takes the building performance well beyond minimum standards. During the construction process, key features of sustainability included the GGBS content and recycled aggregate used in the concrete and the recycled stone required under the extension. So the project was procured under a design and build contract and we and the design team developed the design pretty, to a pretty advanced state, which meant that there was not uh, a lot of opportunity for Gilbert Ash to adapt and compromise the design, so it was great that they executed design incredibly faithfully to our, to our vision and the client's employer's requirements, which everyone was delighted with. But in some areas where there was a little less definition, shall we say, uh, and there was some development of the design throughout the construction phase, then Gilbert Ash were very responsive to adapting to any uh, late refinements in terms of you know, coordinating revised uh, requirements, procuring new packages and how they interface and coordinated together to, to, to maintain budget and maintain programme to achieve uh, the client's end goals. Overall, my experience of this project has been very successful. Uh, Gilbert and Ash have been absolutely excellent as contractors to work with. Um, I found the, the entire team on site actually has been consistent all the way through. It wasn't chopped and changed. We had um, relationships with the same people right the way from beginning to end. Uh, that's been incredibly important. We didn't have to go back and re-educate re or retrain up um, a new team halfway through. Um, and I would say that the success of the project is actually in large measure down to the attitude and culture that Gilbert Ash brought to the project. Um, thoroughly successful and very keen to work with them again in the future.